Welcome back in here to the program. I've got Emily Southwood with me. Before I introduce the next guest, it's, it's listen, you think you're progressive, right? You do. You, oh, yeah, I can handle everything. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Okay, so one of your partner comes home and says, guess what? I'm, I got a new job. Awesome. Great. We're going to make the bills. What's your job? I'm going to film porn. You're going to be in the porn? No, no. I'm going to film the porn. How progressive are you then? What's that experience like for you then? It seems like an extreme example, but it happens. And how you react to that might indicate how you react to a lot of things in your relationship. There's a book written about it by Emily Southwood called Prude. The series is called Web Dreams. Take a look at this. What's your name, miss? Maxine X. What do you do for a living, miss? Porn. People in Canada, they don't know that they have, like, a big porn star. I mean, like, I'm hoping that mainstream people are going to see me a lot more. Oh, she's a happy home. Wow, what a strange physical activity it is. The book written about that experience is Prude. Emily Southwood, nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you, too. All right, so, not only specifically that episode, but, yeah. but, but your man worked on that show. He did, Your yeah. fiancé, right? So, yeah. so, just, so how did this start, then? Um, well, uh, Robbie first took a job where he was offered a job working on Web Dreams um, right around the time we got engaged. And um, so he called me up one night out of the blue. He was in film school at the time. He was working on another film set. And he said, hey, babe, I got this really exciting job offer. It's for a reality TV show filming porn stars. I have to go. And then he hung up the phone. <laughs> and By the way, that's the right way to play it. it. It's obviously, a rob. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Did um, you think you were going to be comfortable with it? Well, I knew that it initially made me feel a little bit squeamish. I wanted to know exactly what he would be doing, how much he would be filming. Um, but I really wanted to feel okay with it. I considered myself pretty liberal and open-minded. And I never want to be the type of girlfriend or wife who tells someone what they can or can't do. Did you see a change in him when he took the job? Um, no, no, not per se, no. Were you looking for it, though? Yes, I probably was looking for it. And it was really more about how I, this, it's the story of how I reacted to it. It's, uh, the book's not just about pornography, it's really about us communicating about pornography. And that's the conversation that, mm -hmm. that one would hope and think is happening, but I wonder how often it's really happening. Exactly. How someone consumes pornography and the impact it might have on somebody's life. Exactly. Do you think that, in, in the process of putting this book together, mm -hmm. how much do you think that conversation is actually happening? Not as much as I think it should, yeah. I think it should happen a whole lot more. Do you think girls are having the right, did you talk to your girlfriends about this and say, or your other guy friends about this? Um, I, I have now spoken to my girlfriends a lot about porn. Was this book and like a dirty little secret? Were you writing it quietly? No, I talked to, I talked to everyone about it. I, and I, but it was writing this book that, that got me talking to my girlfriends about porn, actually, because, you know, at nearly 30, I realized I had almost never talked to my girlfriends about porn. So that's interesting. Whereas Robbie, on the other hand, blah, 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 right? You know? <laughs> I know that women do watch porn, certainly, but the statistics sure. still bear out that it's, it's mostly dominated by men. Uh, in terms of who consumes porn yeah, on the whole. Yeah, I think there's a, gr a growing female viewership for sure, and I think that she, I didn't grow up watching um, much porn at all, but I'm right in that kind of cusp generation where internet porn wasn't still quite readily available when I was a teenager. Previous to this gig for Rob, uh, did you... Did you talk about pornography before with we him? We did. And in fact, I thought we had a really, really open dynamic. That was sort of the irony, is I thought that it was by far the most um, open sexual relationship I'd ever had. We talked about a lot. Right. So I went into this thinking, oh, wow, you know, we got this. And then there was so much more that unraveled. Yeah. It's an interesting place to be when you have to look at yourself and say, okay, so here's who I want to be and here's mm -hmm. what I'm feeling. Yeah. What's right? Is there even a right feeling? No, you know, I mean, and a, a lot of my struggle was, was struggling with that, not wanting to be the kind of uncool girl. And what did I do over the course of uh, a year trying to avoid being the uncool girl? I ended up acting like the mm, <laughs> uncoolest version of myself that I possibly could have. <laughs> Jealous, crazy, insecure, you know. But the fact that we went through those things uh, throughout the year we were engaged actually brought us a lot closer. And He's a reasonable guy, but did at any yeah. point did he ever look at you and say, get off my back? Uh, 
nearly every day, yeah. Um, I, I just, I had trouble not asking the picky, proby conversations that would lead to uncomfortable discussions. So, hey honey, what were you filming today? Was she hot? You know, were you into that? You know, I just had so much trouble not going there, even though I knew it. And, and then so he felt judged and defensive. Right. I felt like something was being held back from me. And, you know, so it was, it was getting through all of those underlying emotions that eventually brought us to a, a better, much better place. And the lesson is about communication. 100%. But wait, he ended up st stopping. He did. How the, did he choose that or did you make him? I made him. <laughs> and it's so funny in retrospect. Yeah, I just, I had a moment at the very end of the show, it was actually uh, the performer that you just saw the clip of. She was um, going to the Dominican Republic to recruit um, strippers to come shoot porn with her. And I, for me, it kind of like walked the line of um, consent and is this really okay? You're just really walking into strip clubs and saying, hey, wanna come shoot some, are there is there testing being done? Are these girls of age? So I had a million questions at that. Is that really what you were concerned about though? No, I was hiding behind all of the politics and ethics so that I wouldn't have to say that thing that was so hard to say, which was this whole shebang is making me so uncomfortable and insecure and the worst version of myself, you know? So I d do I think some of those things, sh did I and do I? Sure. Yes, you should, yeah, of yeah, course. But it was more not, you know, it was the emotional stuff brewing underneath. Coming together on that, it just deflated, you know? Everything went, oh, okay. And now we can really talk about what was going on. It's an interesting place to be. Well, mm -hmm. congratulations, I'm glad you wrote it. Really nice to see you. Thank you, nice to see right. you too. Oh, what's up, everybody? Crude is the book, Lessons I Learned from When My Beyonce Film Forum. We'll be right back.